water. Mm-hmm. All right, y'all, we're back. Mm-hmm. Episode one. No, episode two. Season one. Oh, man, it's like 9 o'clock at night. Okay, season one, episode two. Yeah, we're back, guys. Uh, TGS podcast, episode two. Good morning, good night, good evening, wherever you guys are at right now. Uh, And just so you know, because somebody did ask me this, TGS. uh, It stands for The God Spot. And I believe I put it in the description, my first uh, episode description, that... It's called the God Spot because it's a space where God fills all spaces. And what that means is that whatever we talk about, I'm going to be reverting it back in some way, some shape or form to God and or scripture. And that's why we're going through generations. So this content is not for everyone. I understand that everyone is not interested in generational data the way that I am. So if it's not for you, I get it. You guys feel free to click off, stick with me, but feel free to, you know, click off if you're not interested in it. But uh, I'm going through this because we're building up to something, right, babe? We're yeah. building up to something. Mm-hmm. So eventually, you know, I'll be done with the generational data and I'll move into how it relates to, you know, non-religious affiliation and things like that. But for now, we are doing the second episode, which is about millennials, right, babe? Okay, millennials. Uh, yeah, so we're still on uh, the conversation between Craig Groeschel and Jason Dorsey, right? Actually, Generation Alpha and how it differs from Gen Z. Right, but that's just like that's the that's just the beginning of like the last episode. We're just okay. talking about that in the beginning. Yeah, so uh, yeah. yeah, so we can go into that though. We can just uh, go ahead and jump right into it. Okay, so babe. I was like, make sure my mic is on. So we're going to start with how Generation Alpha differs from Generation Z. So Generation Z also grew up with screens and sharing a lot in common with Generation Alpha. Both cohorts are care deeply about sustainability and the warming climate. Social and policy change and rebuilding our societies into more, uh, I guess you could say, equitable spaces for all. Can you tell us more about that? Yeah, they both. It means a lot to them. Uh, climate sustainability, uh, social policy change, uh, those things mean a lot to uh, Gen Z, and and they're referring to Generation Alpha, which we talked about this uh, kind of off camera. They don't have that much information on Generation Alpha just yet, yeah. because they're still growing up. Mm-hmm. But based on the generation they will gather, and because of who will raise Generation Alpha. Um, They're saying that, yeah, uh, climate sustainability and things like that will be just as important to them as it is to Generation Z right now. So, uh, yeah, both things are equally important to uh, both of those generations with uh, Gen Z leading in age right now. Yeah, because they're older. Yeah, that makes sense. Okay, so let's talk a little bit more about an article that stated that one big difference between Gen Z and Generation Alpha is who's raising them. So Generation Alpha is often dubbed the mini millennial generation as it's typically uh, millennials who are their parents. Right. So now when it says, well, can you just talk about that a little bit more for us so we can know a little bit more about the article and more that surrounds that? Okay, like when it talks about the difference between uh, Gen Z and Gen Alpha is predominantly who's raising them. Yes. Yeah. So, and and back to like the first question you asked me, I, the reason why they're saying they're both going to be equally important uh, is is mainly because the impact that the article said that Gen Z would have on, you know, Generation Alpha by the time they're a certain age. So based on the information that they'll be able to see you know with the news the internet the internet the fast changes of the climate and things like that they're they're kind of they're kind of guessing that this is going to be something that's equally important to gen alpha Mm -hmm. just because of the access to excess like they'll have that access to information kind of like the way gen z does but they're like we talked about this like the way they're born into it is even 
more different than Gen Z, you know, because the the uh, technology is is faster, you know, it's even more advanced. Uh, whereas when Gen Z came into place, it was more like the uprising of right. electronics. So I think Gen Alpha, just with that uh, access to excess, those those things are going to become important to them. So as far as like the whole mini millennial thing, and we we talked about this off camera, which I thought was like super cool. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, they're saying like the the biggest difference between Gen Z and Gen Alpha is going to be in the long run who's raising them, mm -hmm. and uh, Generation Alpha will largely be raised by millennials, which is why they're being dubbed as mini millennials. So that article that you're about to read for us, that mini article. I'll go a little bit more in depth as to why they're calling Gen Alpha like the the mini millennial. Okay. So you said you wanted to read the whole thing, right? Yeah, but I okay. do have one question. So now when it says about who's raising, or you mentioned earlier about like Gen Z having a huge influence around Generation Alpha. Did it say around what age Generation Alpha might be? When that influence might take place? No, no, I'm not too sure about that. I mean, currently we know Generation Alpha is really young. The oldest, uh, the oldest Gen Z is probably 23, 24. So they're kind of like graduating college at this point, yeah. starting families, like more so looking at like careers and then slowly starting families. So they're more so coming more into adulthood right now, whereas Generation Alpha is like really young. Uh, I think the oldest Gen Alpha right now might be 12, 13. So like right. Okay. Yeah, but I did say I wanted to read the whole article. Okay. Piece. Okay. So this article is about parental research habits. Millennial parents had restructured childhood in their own muted Scandinavian style wooden toy aesthetic. Okay, can you say that? That was a lot. Yeah. <laughs> so. No, you oh my god. I'm like that. All right, go ahead. I get the point though. I yeah. get the point. <laughs> I'm like, wait a minute, I don't want to do basically that. they have their millennial they're basically saying millennials have like their own style of parenting. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> they are a generation looking to provide the best for their own children and they research products a lot before they buy them in effort to do so. As health conscious caretakers, millennial parents seek out a lot of information about the products they buy and expose their kids to, says Heather Dretch, I think that's how you say her name, a North Carolina pool college of management assistant marketing professor. From toys and food to clothing and personal care products, they love to be in the know about the best brands for their children, and they choose only the safest, cleanest, highest quality ones. Dretsu suggests that this may turn many millennials or generation alpha into more brand loyalists than we might expect a marked difference from Gen Z. High trust in products heavily researched by their parents may give some brands a leg up in winning long-term lo loyalty with this rising group. So before we jump into the ending, um, now I have a quick question for you. So it says when Heather was talking about they're a generation looking to provide the best for their own children and they research products a lot before they buy them in effort to do so why does that matter and why would you say that's important uh so when it comes to like how millennials are doing that yeah. like how they search for uh, brand products mm -hmm. i would say that's important because we talked about this like uh the whole brand loyal loyalist part of the article which we both thought was really cool yeah. um and this part is really true like i we can even say that as uh a married couple right now that we currently don't have any children yet but we know how we're super into like brands right so it's like and we see that amongst our peers is fairly common right um but the research shows like millennials are really big into researching like research 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 before they buy anything right so you would think that that would make us a skeptical generation mm -hmm. But it's actually on the contract on the contrary, because what the article said was that it's more about the high quality products for us. Right. right? So I wouldn't say that like uh, like, you know, a millennial is the type of person that's like, oh, I won't buy my children anything from the, you know, Dollar General or a 99 right. cent store or something like that. I'm not saying that, but I'm just saying, like, if you if you look at the way the article 
like kind of put it into perspective, it's more like we do ample amounts of research before we invest into something, like before we feel safe in investing into like buying something. And if we have children, introducing it to our kids, mm -hmm. right? So we know that just from the way we are when we buy uh, toys and things like that for our nieces and nephews, like we're super into like, what's the history of this? How long has it been out? What do the reviews look like? Has anybody choked or died from it? Yeah. You know what I mean? And it's like millennials, like like based on the research that it shows about us, we tend to do that a lot before we pretty much buy anything unless it's a brand that we are familiar with. So unless it's kind of like a household brand for us, it's not really, or a household name that we're super familiar with. We're, we're really like uh, hesitant to kind of jump into that, especially if it's um, a brand for children and it doesn't have like a long standing good history. So this is why like now so many people are so skeptical about like certain things with Johnson and Johnson. It's been going on for years, but it's just like, you know, now with some of the, the, the cases that have come out and the lawsuits and things, it's kind of like. Uh, it's 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 like, do I really want to buy that? But I know plenty of people around my age that they still will buy Johnson and Johnson. Like they still swear by like Gerber, you know, yeah. or like Similac. And it's it's crazy with some of the information that's out there. Yeah. But because millennials are such, I want to say, I was gonna say like because we fall into that category, but we really are like that category. They kind of have branded us that already. Like because we're such brand loyalists mm -hmm. uh it talks a lot about what our children will be like and they they pretty much say like because of those habits that we have those will be habits that will pass on to our children which in return and this is what we thought was really cool yeah. will make a, a mini millennial generation which then children will be brand loyalists mm -hmm. you know like they will be kind of like the way you could say millennials are with their parents. Like, right. you know, we swear by this because mom used it. We swear by this because dad used it or because we had it in the house. So, and the, the, uh, the aspect we talked about it from was really cool because we talked, I'm like, that's it. Like it's over. Like yeah. millennial parents that like love God and are followers of Christ. Like that's the best brand there is out there. So it's like, if that's, if the data, right mm -hmm. men lie women lie numbers don't so if the data speaks for itself mm -hmm. that was like super exciting for me you know and i know somebody could be like you're jumping ahead of yourself but it's like oh, just God. to see like what the data is already saying about how millennials are with brands and how we do research before we introduce products into our households and into our our kids lives it's like that's going to be the same thing i think with the gospel you mm -hmm. know what i mean so it's like if if jesus is a household name you know, for a millennial household raising children, then I think in return, it'll be super easy. Right. Like not, not that there won't be any problems, okay. but again, like because of the way we are, like I think that it's promising, okay. right? For um, the mini millennial generation, which would be generation alpha yeah. to be a pretty, uh, I won't just jump ahead and say saved generation, yeah. but you know, there's some, there's some hope there. It looks yeah. bright there. <laughs> yeah. Now you think that, now, so you're basically telling us that millennials get that brand loyalist, which they'll pass down to Gen Alpha. Do they get that from their parents? And or yeah, they're, they're saying that the that the millennials, like Generation Alpha, will pick that up as a habit based on how millennials currently are. So that's why in that article, you know, it's kind of breaking down like the way millennials are before they kind of invest in products. Like, go ahead. And then millennials got that from their parents, right? No, well, it's it's not saying that. That's more so just about how the millennial generation is. Yeah, it's just it's just about saying like how we are as a generation. Okay. Okay. So, millennials are statistically, we know they're one of the generations that are researched the most or studied the most, correct? Yeah, yeah. I would say um, based on the research, millennials are probably the generation, well, they are the generation that is studied largely. Like, so probably the generation that they have the most information on, I would say. Like, they have a lot of information yeah. across generations, but 
millennials have been like kind of like a hot topic. I I mean, we talked about this a couple of times already. I would just probably say it's probably because of how hard it was to keep us in a workforce at some point. Yeah, that was yeah. probably a big reason. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> now, millennials, they were born 1980 to around what? What does the year say there? Uh, 1996. So right, so age. sometimes the years shift. So yeah, it says that millennials are born between... Uh, 1980 and 1996 and I remember when those years were different because I remember looking it up a couple of years ago and a millennial started at like 1976 and then they kind of shifted it over to 80. Mm -hmm. And I said that in the first episode that sometimes those years can shift. Yeah. You know, I remember at one point like the cutoff was 1994, I think instead of six. Mm -hmm. So it can shift, but right now I think it's 1980 to 1996. Okay, okay, so that is about accurate. Now, do you remember when the article spoke about like the key thing with millennials and it is that they are older than most people assume? The oldest millennials are around the age of 40? Yeah, so if you go just off of that, uh, if you go off of that age range that we just spoke about, the oldest, that would put the oldest millennial at about 40. And like I said, because the range, sometimes they like play with the numbers a little bit. Like some, some research will say the oldest millennial today is 41. Some research will say the oldest millennial today is 40. Okay. You know, so um, yeah, and the, long, the youngest is probably around 27. I would say the youngest millennial today. But that phrase, you know, um, what, what what was the phrase you read right there where it talks about uh, the millennials and them being like, what what was it that you oh, said? That uh, the key thing with millennials is that they are older than most people assume. Right, right. And we, we talked about that a little bit uh, off camera where it's kind of like most millennials, they have like a family member. And Jason did mention this in the uh, talk with Craig, mm -hmm. that most millennials will have a family member that will constantly refer to them almost like they're still 17 right. or they're like 25 mm -hmm. it's it's crazy because i think at one point one article said we're we're, we're kind of nicknamed like the generation that like never ages mm -hmm. you know or like you know i guess you could say for lack of better terms doesn't want to grow up yeah. i don't really like that but i unfortunately when i look at some peers that i've had in the past i'm like uh that's kind of true yeah. so um what is was that the dog yeah, it was possessed. Yeah, so yeah, so uh, we we talked about that. How you know millennials are kind of like uh, the a the the generation that doesn't want to grow up, and because of that, I think the next point that we flow into is like delayed adulthood, right? Well, how millennial? Oh, so. Yes, that we're gonna get right into that after millennial, like basically what you were just say, uh, stating that millennials have been talking about the same twenty five year old for fifteen years. So yes. Yeah, yeah, like they're talking about that person, kind of like you know they're twenty five, or they're still twenty seven. You know, in reality, they're like a thirty five year old. You know, or they're like a a forty year old, and a lot of that does come from the delayed adulthood. Mm -hmm. It's a lot of the uh, actions. That they're, that they're putting forth and the things that they're delaying. Yeah. Uh, they, yeah, they're delaying a lot of historic marks of adulthood. It doesn't mean that they are the right marks. They are just the historical ones. Yeah, Jason stated that. Like, like not necessarily like uh, these marks are set in stone, but right. like, you know, historically speaking, you graduate from college at a certain point. Mm -hmm. or historically speaking, you are in your career path by a certain point. Historically speaking, you would look you would be looking to get married by a certain point, right. then have children by a certain point, then retire. And it's kind of like the millennial generation. It's like they're like we're dodging all of that. Like yeah. we're delaying like every last bit of it. That's basically what they're saying. Yeah, like from the workforce, finishing their education, buying their first home, marriage and kids. Yeah, it's it's all of all of the above and it's um and and really large a large percentage of that um i saw an article that said millennials played a large percentage as to you know why some of the the uh the marriage age was pushed back mm -hmm. because you know for millennials it was kind of like yeah we feel more comfortable around like 28 
you know, 27, 30, like it just started to kind of like creep up there. Uh, whereas the ge the former generations, like the ones before us, they were still kind of okay with getting married a lot younger than what millennials currently are. And like, you know, most some, for the most part, Gen Z's not even really like thinking about that right now based on the numbers. So okay. yeah, I thought that was interesting. That is interesting. More information will be interesting. Um, so when I was, because I became so curious with uh, the study of just the generations, because I never have been, I was doing some research and I came across that millennials are more likely to be unemployed, have student debt and live at home with their parents than Gen X. So mm -hmm. this is totally true. So I just wanted you to kind of like, you know, tell us a little bit more of your opinion on that. Yeah, no. Uh, based on based on the research that's out here, that's a uh, that's definitely true. Um, what was the first thing you said? Unemployed. Yes, unemployed. Right. So, and we talked about this with millennials. Uh, at one point, I, it's gotten better, mm -hmm. but definitely three years ago, I would say three to five years ago, we were definitely the generation that was the hardest to keep in the workforce. Like we kind of like turned the workforce upside down to where you had a lot of upper management kind of like, hey, these individuals that are about 30 years old, like we can't keep them at work. Yeah. And remember, I, I was uh, having a conversation with my mom, like, what was it, like two years ago when she was telling us like, yeah, we can't keep people at my job that are your age. Like they come and like they have so many demands yeah. and they have like so many wants that if they're not being met, like they're out the door. You know, so the unemployed part, I, it's like, it's unfortunately, I could say like, yeah, a part of that is probably true. And I don't think it's because like millennials don't want to work. I just think that millennials, a lot of millennials, um, there's a lot like in the background, like uh, a lot of single parent homes, mm -hmm. right? So yeah. what that produced was, what we saw there was a lot of children kind of not have mom and dad at certain events and be at certain important things in our life because they were at work. So you kind of almost had like a generation come up that was bitter, for lack of better terms, like towards work. And it was kind of like, oh, like by the time we were able to get into the workforce, we were like, yeah, we remember this game like that you play with our parents. And it's like, we're not doing that, you know? And that's really where like the millennial generation kind of stands when it comes to like work and I, I don't think it's like again that like the the millennials don't want to work because we were largely raised by boomers yeah. you know for the most part so I don't think it's that we don't want to work I just think that there has to be like some some real flexibility in place and some work-life balance yeah. that looks normal in order for you to retain you know a millennial like you you so can't what would that schedule what would it have to look like at a job where they might I think it's going to differ for each millennial, for each right. person, but like, but like work life balance is like a real thing. Right. Mm -hmm. So it's like if I, I want to be able to like take a day off of work or take a half day or leave in case of an emergency and mm -hmm. I'm not worried about if I'm going to get fired. Right. You know, like most of the time, if a millennial is in an environment like that, they're probably going to stick around about a year or two before they're looking for a new job anyway. Mm -hmm. And statistically yeah. speaking, that's about how long our generation is in their job before they start seeking another one, one to three years. Yeah. So I'm just like, yeah, it's the millennial generation is definitely the generation where it's like kind of like flip the workforce upside down when it came to like, yeah, we're not, we're not kind of do, we're not doing that, yeah. you know? So it's, um, it's, uh, it's interesting to watch, you know, it's interesting to watch millennials and Gen Z in the workforce together because like in my group at work, we have both, you know? Yeah. So it's, um, yeah, it's an interesting dynamic to watch there. What was the second one after unemployed? It was have student debt. Why yeah, that? yeah. And unemployment or? I think it's because of unemployment. And another thing that's really common across the millennial generation mm -hmm. is uh, switching majors. Yeah. Like that's something that's like really common, like being in one major for like, two years and then it's just like yeah i want to go do something else yeah and i almost did that too I yeah my fourth year in <laughs> yeah yeah i did that you know so i can understand and i have a couple of peers that i work with currently and i work with prior 
um, to my current job that did that as well. So I think a lot of that was just like, you know, and, and it's in the research where like millennials are kind of like, you know, switching, they were switching majors a lot when they were in like the prime of really being in college, yeah. kind of like being sticking with one major for like one to two, even three years. And then like, you know, junior, senior year, kind of like, yeah, this is not the route I want to go. You know, so I think that did aid to some student debt with that constant, you know, accumulation of it. Um, and what was the next one? The next one was live at home with their parents. Yeah, definitely. Compared to Gen Z, millennials compared to Gen Z, without a doubt. Yeah. <laughs> most uh, most Gen Z uh, people that I know that I'm friends with, they don't live at home with their parents. They That's don't. Like, I wonder, is that because the way they were raised? I, I think it's like that. Yeah, I do think so. Like with the way their parents were. Um, I think it's also because that's the generation before uh, the entitled generation, which is what we're called. Yeah. Right. So it's kind of like that generation still had, I think, a large, a large work ethic. Mm -hmm. Well, like I do say as millennials, we I believe we have one. I believe millennials have a great work ethic. I just think that, yeah. you know, sometimes we could be a little bit challenging in the workforce, but it's we like be very loyal once we find a job that'll work with us. Yeah, yeah, but largely, like based on what the numbers show, yeah, Gen X is not uh, staying at home with their parents nearly as long as millennials. You have a lot of millennials living at home until their thirties, like easily, yeah, easily. You know, so um, yeah, and when I mean, I wasn't really shocked when I saw the numbers mm -hmm. of that because like. There are people that we know right now yeah. that live with their parents and they're around our age, some older than, you know, some older than than me, yeah. you know, especially. So it's just kind of like in that sense, you see it, but it's not it's not nearly as bad. Like for the Gen Xers, I might know like maybe one yeah. or two of my Gen X friends that live at home with their parents, maybe one. Oh. But for millennials, yeah. oh, no, I probably know at least five. Yeah, like at least you. yeah i know at least like five so yeah okay so we and we talk i feel like they're throwing us under the bus a little bit a little but it's bit. all right like yeah, yeah. <laughs> um so we talked about this actually prior to the first episode right. how millennials are not tech savvy they are tech dependent and how they're literally or we're literally obsessed with it I believe that is because we Yeah, started. yeah, I remember those notes that I put in there for you. It so and and you said this before, it is interesting because the millennial generation, we are kind of deemed as like the tech savvy generation. Yeah. And I don't I don't say that to say that we're not, mm -hmm. right? I just I just agree with the with the studies and the research that say we're a lot more tech dependent than we are savvy. And it's and it's like I said, I think it's because like we are more like with the millennials, we're more kind of like, ooh, ah, when it comes to like technology. And I mean, you got to think about it. We had cassette tapes, yeah. radios. Then we saw the iPod. Then we saw the iPad, the iPod go to the iPad. You know what I mean? Then like we saw like big bad computers. Then the computers got thinner. Then we saw like super slim laptops then we saw laptops that you can fold right then tablets you can draw on right and then it's like we saw like uh you know like cds and then like um cd rom cds usbs then it goes to like the cloud it's like we saw all of that stuff you know what i mean and i think for us it's like we are in love with like the evolution of what we've witnessed yeah. you know like just like how it's all just kind of like came into fruition and then like for lack of better terms went away and then something else came along that was better faster you know more advanced so um i think that's why we're good at learning tech mm -hmm. and why we learn it fast yeah. because of the kind like we saw it evolutionize so it's kind of like yeah we can keep up with this yeah. you know what i mean like it's kind of like our minds work quick because we had to go through so many different creations you know like we had to we had to deal with the walkman then we had to learn an ipod then we had to play with the ipad then we had so it's like i think the millennial mind is just really good at like just moving you know yeah. to the next thing and kind of like picking up mm -hmm. the next thing 
But uh, yeah, tech savvy, I wouldn't put us at the top of the food chain on that. Like, oh. honestly, if as years go on, like Gen Alpha is going to blow us and Gen Z out the water. And it's already crazy because Gen Z, I remember growing up and watching my nieces and nephews be like three and they have the whole iPad and they're just maneuvering it like yeah. they're us. And I'm like, whoa. Because yeah. we didn't have that type of stuff at those ages. Right, right. Yeah, like, like said, yeah, you know, we had like some, yeah, and I, I can't even say like, I don't even think leapfrog. We didn't even have stuff like that. No. You know what I mean? Like, so it's kind of like, when I think about Gen Z, like we talked about them coming around during like the uprising of technology. Yeah. So it's like technology was already around, yeah. but it was like getting more advanced. It was getting more faster. Whereas like Gen Alpha, like seriously, there, I mean, AI, like um, AI is already going to be advanced, artificial intelligence. Like, I mean, they already see Tesla, like Teslas are going to probably be like, rockets or something you know, know what i'm saying like you think about it because we have virtual reality well, Gen Z, yeah we yeah that. so what's next i mean that? the metaverse and the stuff i'm talking about right now yeah. like gen alpha is going to grow up with that stuff already in place yeah, so right. they're going to be even faster you know what i mean like they're going to be like they're going to blow us out the water you know what i mean and it's kind of like at that point I think we'll be the grumpy old ones talking about like, <laughs> you know, where's the iPad? Yeah. But it's it's just kind of, it's so crazy to think about because just it, it differs like across generations and it does it in such a way to where you can see like, just like the onslaught of like, just access to excess. Yeah. Like, it's just, it's just like, I mean, we can already we've we've been able to get information at our fingertips at our fingertips, honestly, since I was probably like, I don't know, 13, 14. Yeah. Right. So it's like now it's just it's just mind blowing. Like it's I remember being on computers when I was 15 years old and it's like the things I could do on my phone now. I'm just sometimes I'm like, what else are they going to come up with? Yeah. But I could just imagine. Yep. I can just imagine. So yeah, those would be, I guess you could say, the markers and uh, some of the uh, the moments for like millennials. And one thing we didn't talk about, mm -hmm. but we can get into really quick, is like those uh, that moment. Because remember, for for Gen Z, we talked about how the depression, like really, mm -hmm. you know, like uh, the I, I believe it was around two thousand and eight. Yeah. Uh, when we talked about how that was like a big turning point for their life, and it like really played a, a part in like how they are with money, so you know. It a part with us. Our our moment. Remember, we talked about this nine eleven. Yeah. yeah, like for us, it was it was nine eleven hands down. You know. It's crazy to me how this works, like the generations across countries. Like you know, just because it's a different culture, it doesn't change. Because I, you know, thinking about me being from Greece, I'm like none of this changes in people in all over yeah. yeah do you remember what you were doing in greece because you were still in greece yeah, during 9 11. I was, I was actually getting homeschooled and at this time there was someone who came from the school to homeschool me and she actually showed a video on her laptop of it oh okay so i watched it on her laptop at home yeah yeah i distinctively being in math class yeah I'm like, I, I remember that day. It, it was just so crazy. Yeah, so for millennials, 9-11 is, is the huge moment for us to kind of like, where we talked about this in the first episode, where were you when dot, 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 like where were you when 9-11 happened? And it's like for the millennial generation, that is something that just tends to come rushing back to us. Like we all remember it. We know where we were. We know what was happening. I remember when I came home, what song was playing on the news while they were playing it. Like it was just, it was just a crazy, crazy time. So much chaos and panic. Um, so much hate. And the crazy thing was it, it, it wasn't so different from COVID in the sense where one particular racial group started to experience a lot of hate. Oh, yeah. So you know how like Asian hate has like gone up? It's like with 9-11, I told you about this living in New York. It's like everyone who was from the Middle East, it was like people, they were, their businesses were being destroyed. People were calling them names in the street, throwing things at them. It was a really crazy time, yeah. you know? So the way they say 9-11 impacted millennials is that 
we also, and it's funny because they partner 9-11 for us yeah. along with like the the constant evolution of technology. Mm -hmm. And what it what they say it has done is it has created a generation that is not that doesn't cling. And I love that. Like we don't really cling to anything. And I think you and I talked about this before. Like we saw so much come into fruition and then leave. Mm -hmm. Like for us, things seem so temporary. So you know, detaching right. Them. Like it's I think we just kind of it's easy for us to detach from things. Mm -hmm. And I also think it's easy for us to go into the mindset of like, yeah, that's not going to be around long. Yeah, I agree. You know, because we saw so many things come and then go and then come and then go. So it's like for us, like between like 9-11, I mean, the Twin Towers was like, especially for New Yorkers, yeah. you know what I mean? It was monumental. And it's like, it, for me, I remember being able to see the Twin Towers. It's crazy to think about a generation that doesn't even get to go visit or look at it. You know, so it's a, it, yeah, it's like a crazy thing, but it really has said that it's put us kind of in like a headspace mm -hmm. and then kind of like a, um, a place where we kind of look at things like it's very temporary, you know, like it's not lasting. It's not, or like at any moment, you know, it's, it's, uh, it's vulnerable to destruction. Yeah. And I just thought, wow, that's, that's crazy. That's really crazy. So yeah, guys, we're gonna wrap this up because it's like, what time is it? I don't even know. But before we wrap this up, if you would like to complete that sentence, where were you? If you were a millennial during this time, uh, during 9-11, you can put that in the comments. Yeah, you can go ahead and drop that in the comments yeah. below. Sure, if you were a millennial, where were you when 9-11 happened? So it is a little past 10 o'clock, guys. We are going to get out of here because I got to go to work in the morning. Um, yeah, so we'll be back. Episode three, we are doing, I think I'm on Gen X. Yeah? Yeah, I think I'm on Gen X. Oh, Ooh. Gen X is going to be fun. Are you ready? I was about to say, are you ready? Yeah, I'm ready. So we're going to be talking about Gen X on episode three. You guys stay tuned. We'll see you next week. Take care. Have a good night. Peace. Peace.